Okay, we're going to talk about the impacts of poverty on the brain. First thing we have to establish is, does poverty truly impact the brain? The first thing that happened was the Great Mapping Study. The Great Mapping Study was basically trying to track the normal brain development of children for the first two years of life. And they used a large cohort and just tracked them. And when they brought the children in to scan their brains and they did electroencephalograms, what they did was they were looking for kids in stimulating environments to show a high level of activity. For example, high level of activity shows you're focused and you're learning. But they had a bunch of kids who came in and they were showing the activity levels that were low, like theta, that shows that they were wandering brains, even in a stimulating environment. Then they had some that were showing beta, which means you're basically asleep, but they were awake. And they backtracked those kids and they found out, oh my god, most of these kids come from poverty. So that started people to look specifically at it. Elizabeth Gould and a few other, um, Kimberly Noble started really doing a lot of research here. And Kimberly Noble brought a bunch of kids in representing the natural population and she ran the test and looked at electric activity in infants and found consistently more kids from poverty are showing low levels of activity, showing low focus, and poor memory. Um, how do we know that poverty is to blame? When we looked at gray matter, and gray matter is a fancy way of saying the density of an area is gray matter, and it tells us how well it's going to function. White matter is how it communicates from one region to the other. The brain needs both of those things to be high. Well, at age one, gray matter looked about the same in most babies. While tracking them, Wolf and Hansen found you could consistently figure out kids from poverty because you saw a drop in gray matter by age four. It is more significant than you think. Right above the poverty line, we saw a drop of somewhere from three to four percent in gray matter. Right under the poverty line, eight to ten percent. And every tick under that, more and more. That means the region of that brain will not function as well. One of the places poverty impacts is the prefrontal cortex. Let me give it to you this way. Here's your primitive brain, your limbic system. Surface area, prefrontal. It is the job of the prefrontal cortex to exercise control over the primitive brain. If you can't exercise control, you can't control thoughts, actions, or behaviors. As a result, we now know that kids from poverty are showing low gray matter in the prefrontal cortex, a drop in gray matter in the hippocampus, that's in charge of short-term memory, no short-term memory, no long-term memory. A drop in gray matter in the amygdala, the ability to deal with emotions and understand the social world. So we already know, right off the bat, if you're gonna work with kids from poverty, you better work on three things. Focus, memory, and self-regulation. Control, self-control.